Hi there. Thank you for downloading, listening to, and watching the Lean Into Artcast, a show where a couple of visual storytellers get together and take various uh, looks at explorations of topics that tend to occur to a person when they go on this endeavor of communicating visually. We think hard about this stuff, so you will too. My name is Jersey Drozd. I am a cartoonist and teaching artist, and the other host is... Hey, everyone. I'm Rob Stenzinger. I do user experience design, and I do interactive experiences, and I teach and coach about all of it. Happy 301st episode. Hey, every episode's an anniversary, isn't it? I guess it is. It's 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 acknowledgement of checking in once again on the thing that you do on a regular basis. You know, I'm I'm getting ready to do a um actually I'm in the middle of organizing and laying out a webinar that I'm going to be doing for the Ohio Arts Council on um documenting your teaching experiences and using video to like de demonstrate evidence of your work as a teaching artist. And um one of the things that I'm going to be using in the talk is this very project and like how like yeah, Checking in a thing 300 times means that you get a lot of practice at like engaging with um, sometimes cha challenging, uh, at the very least helping you um, uh, formalize your thinking on all these different things that you engage with as a teaching artist and as an artist, right? So it's worth celebrating that, yeah, we've done this 301 times now. I, right there with you. It's, it's, uh, the, the, this itself is a kind of, um, it, it is a kind of practice. It is a way to both, um, uh, build, build, uh, capabilities to share, uh, benefits and helpful things with others. And, um, and through that, I mean, it affects us and it affects the community and the people that tune in and all that kind of stuff. It's this, it's, it's a really, yeah, it's a it's a it's a wonderful thing to to do this, and it totally has fed into other things I, I work on. It's it's helped me when I facilitate collaboratively. It helps me if I'm making a if I'm consulting, and part of that is like, oh, create this work product and describe it and help others explore the rationale and whatnot. It's like, yeah, this this kind of verbalizing and thinking through our um, our challenges and choices related to the stuff we make it feeds into everything i do honestly yeah well i mean i guess that's 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 kind of um a cool place to be and i think that's worth stopping and acknowledging as well as like how lovely is it that we've worked hard for a long time to get to a place where a lot of our projects feed into one another so they they aren't they're they're separate channels they require different kinds of thinking but it's cool that there's a, a um a symbiosis of, of sorts in that these things like the stuff we work on generates ideas to bring into the show and then practicing this this activity through the show helps us think harder about the things that we engage with so it's a virtuous cycle or i don't know like uh i guess it's a black hole also because <laughs> i i because i don't know how to escape it i feel like i've you know i've crossed that threshold um no it's <laughs> it's it's a funny thing and that's i love wrestling with that topic because i enjoy being a generalist and applying the things i do related to um things i work on both with a for sure intention for for uh trade and you know to earn from like those there's really obvious projects that, I, that are in that category for me and even there there's not only one but then there's the other stuff i dabble with and explore and play and and um some of those I'm open to having become profitable and some of them I'm not really worried about it as well. But this whole, it's, it ends up being this, um, yeah, quite a little shelf of different things that could be oddities. It could be like one voice in my head goes like, you should specialize, stop this. <laughs> and another voice is like, ah, come on. This is so bad. Like I've, by, by doing uh, by embracing the business side of being a creative person, I am actually learning more about being creative because the business side is another kind of creative fluency if you look at it in a certain way. And uh, yeah, so like I, I, I'm just honestly just working, trying to get better at um, celebrating and playing well with, you know, other spe with specialists and other generalists and mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just another thing to practice. I love that term, creative fluency. I'm I'm totally gonna steal that for my webinar. <laughs> um, okay, so this episode 
we're going to revisit an old, old project from Lean Into Art. And re it, this is something we talked about in episode 300, I think, a little bit. Um, and look at how might we uh, look at this, th this project again in 2020. And how would we think about, like, uh, what would we do differently if we started engaging with an old project of ours called The Quests? With that, I'll hit the music so that we can get into the show proper. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So, the quests. Let's talk about the quests real quick. For those who are newer to the show, what were the quests? The last time we did one was 2014. Six mm. years ago. Yeah, it, uh, let's see. The quests were this uh, monthly creative challenge that was meant to be sort of uh, very contained. It was meant to be sort of this exercise that took a few minutes. And that was uh, like a thing that we would, we would all explore together as a community. So we would, um, like, in a way... It's like we we're practicing sort of like an open classroom flavor of lean into art, which always was part of how this thing was founded and some of the ideas that we uh, we practice in different projects. Like you you mentioned really consistently that you're a cartoonist and teaching art artist, and that uh, that comes through. I I do I teach a lot of workshops as well, um, and like so, how do you incorporate that? How do you how do we sort of well practice the things that we want to practice through this project and, uh, and, and I don't know, enjoy some of that practice as a community. And, and then the quests were a, like this ball of intention about that, um, where I, we, we started this in what episode 67 and we were limbering up for a new year and it's similar situation where it's like, well, we've got all these goals. We, we know that we're embracing, various aspects of visual storytelling how can we just bake that into this project and practice it and whatnot and so the quests are like a system for that in a way it's it's like um many you know many creative challenges slash activities or even they were they were actually designed with a lot of gameful in mechanisms in there as well which we'll get into in a few minutes mm -hmm. so um Let's see. What do you? Um, well, and, and what, do, what do you remember about the the quests and our how we got going with all that? Well, I I remember that they were also, from my perspective, slightly informed by um, gameful activities I was doing in my classrooms. Uh, this was when I was really, I was a couple of years into my my work at the Ann Arbor Art Center, and um, I noticed that I was having situations where. Uh, students were taking my class multiple times in a row. Right? I'd only been there a couple of years now, and I noticed that, like, okay, this kid, there's like two or three kids who are taking my class two, three times a year. So I have to start really changing things up to make it interesting for them, and it will, as as a result, have make things more interesting for me. And I didn't want to just merely dig deeper and deeper on the the art form of comics uh, getting more complex and more abstract with it um for the the kids who have taken the a bunch of times because now i've got the situation where there's like you know there's nine new kids in the class and there's five returning kids well i have to do something that honors both it, like has to bring more variety into the room um and and then so this idea of creating little creative games that get them to play with abstract concepts in a way that isn't immediately apparent and it's not even important that it's immediately apparent what's important is that it gets them drawing and it gets them um, engaged with constructing ideas visually in a playful manner that's building skill that's building um, confidence and competence but is also meant to warm them up to do something that takes longer right because i'm now how do you get an 11 year old to commit to an hour and a half of drawing activity well it's pretty challenging. So if I bake in a little warm up th exercise at the top, it feels like a game. Then I can get them to draw for forty five minutes. And then we have like a cool down exercise or something. Um, and I often did like a warm up and a cool down, and then there'd be like two or three different discrete activities in there so that they didn't get too too bored with this big abstract idea of creating a twenty two page comic book, right? So 
the quests were also kind of like informed by that of like, okay, this seems to be very successful in in that it feels very gameful. The thinking you're doing is really hard, but it feels like play. And now that it's it's a, a short, discreet little activity that takes maybe 15 minutes, hopefully 15 minutes, although not all the quests did. Um, now you can like you can fit that into your art day, and it serves as a cool little like thoughtful warm up to 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 dive into the actual drawing because in my experience, um, one of the hardest things, the hardest thresholds to cross is that moment when you have a blank page to when you throw it on those first lines, or you have a fully penciled page and I got to throw it on those first ink lines. Um, and so the act of just doing something that is creative gets you into that headspace so that now you can dive into it with like a little bit more of a, um, uh, a flexible mindset. Does that well, sound I right? Suppose confidence too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, there's a lot of, uh, we're, we're seeking to uh, honestly uh, level up, enjoy the process of not working on it alone. Right. It's one of those things that, that it's, it, it can be a lot of fun to have this. Um, well, I mean, big cr creative challenges that are you know, things that we talk about all the time. One of the, one of the aspects of them that is, that is interesting and, comp and compelling is that it is a more social way to uh, continue to learn and practice. That's that. a good point. That thank you for teasing that out of what I was saying earlier too, because I I did skim over that or didn't even acknowledge it. Is that like when we would do things like the eight minute drawing warm up, where you do a six box grid and you draw a four minute drawing of an object, two minute, one minute, thirty second, fifteen second, five second drawing of, of the object. I would say eighty percent of the fun of that activity was the kids showing each other their work at the end and comparing to how their two minute drawings compared stood up to their one minute drawings. So the social component is big, and that was also baked into the quests as well. So this is meant to be something that you do to warm up, and then you share your results with the other leaners. Yeah, that was that was all sort of baked in. Where, um, and there's some enlightened self self interest in there as well. Where it's like, well, we could have a good time practicing and leveling up, showing that we're practicing and leveling up, and others can notice and and tune in and and uh, join the join the fun. So that's, I mean, part of that is, is to help grow the community. Um, mm -hmm. And to really like double uh, emphasize the point you brought up too, that, that the, there's a kind of general confidence, competence, uh, skillfulness, where each time you go to your next creative activity, hopefully you're bolstered, where you know the mechanisms that get you to move and make progress. That's because you've been practicing whatever it is for you individually, your experience that that can't be encapsulated and put out very well, other than in like some time, some people poetically hit things that resonate with a lot of us once in a while um, that that will celebrate like, um, oh, gosh, um, Bolt City, who, who did the Kazu Kibushi? Kazu Kibushi. He did the the the. Um, the progression of a uh, of our how you relate to a project thing that we've quoted a bajillion times, mm -hmm. others have as well. So, but so anyway, so like by sharing these and facilitating these experiences, participating them, it's like we're there to facilitate, we're there to um, to host, but also be you know leveling up as well uh, by playing mm -hmm. along. And uh, I guess let's like so it, we mentioned it was a game kind of right. So how mm -hmm. how did it have these? You know, what were the mechanisms of of a quest? Yeah, games so, games typically have some kind of parameters or rules, right? In order to like know that you're in a game. So what did we exactly. come up with so initially? There's, yeah, there's some kind of boundaries there where there's there's this clear challenge that you can opt into and um some kind of feedback loop to where you go through the experience once you're in, then that that's 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 the game and the rules and, and knowing where you're at, how, how it's going. And so we would put out a quest that each quest is, is, you know, some sort of request to make a thing and some context describing the exercise. And there was a couple of branching choices, right? So games that have interesting choices and different consequences for the choices, more ways to pull you in, right? So there's, um, there's the regular quest, but then there's the heroic challenge version of the quest. Um, and then there's... Um, examples that that so like we we tried to bake in like celebrating others work along the way sort of like um you know virtual high five and and acknowledgement of the community amongst one another and then you then sharing power-ups it's like well you've 
you've been successful or you're fighting that challenge, what's helping you? What's, what's keeping you there and or uh, is a tool that you've picked up? Well, that's a power up. Please, please share. And we've, so we had all that terminology and reinforcing mechanisms to sort of, you know, understand the thing, make it harder if you want, acknowledge each other and also share helpful stuff. Um, so it was kind of an interesting compressed, uh, in a way, like a time shifted mini micro workshop, right? Yeah. Yeah. With, with a lot of different ways to, um, provide value to your, to your fellow leaners in that the first one was like you said, heroic challenge is like, just do the activity. So like, we'll go through some of the different quests that we came up with over that year. Um, but it could be like, well, one of them was a sound effect one. Surprise, surprise. Um, and it was like, okay, hero challenge. A sound effect. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. do make a sound effect and make it based and like, and be prepared to defend your design choices, right? Like the language I use in my classroom all the time is like, there's no right or wrong answer, but you got to tell me why you're thinking what you're thinking. Saying, I don't know just because is not acceptable in this classroom. You know, you got to point to something that that is informing why you're doing what you're doing. Um and then, the, but then, like the um, the second one with the items of excellence was like, you know, well, he instead of actually making the sound effect, I'll collect a bunch of really cool ones that I found elsewhere as great examples as food for thought for the community, right? Hmm. Or link power up is like I found the, here's like five tutorials that show like how other people do this to help you with your heroic challenge. Right. I wonder if like, like I'm imagining different like classifications that we could have come up with for like, well, okay. If you're, if you're the cleric, (laughs) right. Oh yeah. Why not take it on? Yeah. So there's, there could be a role playing aspect of this too. Could even be an Instagram filter, which (laughs) Boop, little little rectangle on your head. Oh sort of, yeah, that thing that everybody's been doing right now where it, like it sticks on your forehead and tells you what kind of D and D character you'd be. Mm-hmm. But yeah, yeah. It's like it's like so it, it we gave people lot, lots of different ways to participate in this thing. Um, but it was all in this the general idea was is think hard, practice, and boost up your fellow leaners in your participation of this thing whether through demonstrating your skill or uh collecting and um curating this the 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 uh the skills of others so like what's a couple of examples of quests like yeah let's let's, go through some you were sort of uh highlighting the first one a little bit right where Mm -hmm. where that was that was a sound-based quest and specifically it was about making um essentially visualizing sound around three different mechanical things and uh you you offered uh, you could you could make visualize the sound of a rusty old tractor starting up, or an air conditioner in use, or someone making an espresso, and mm. honestly, like for you know anyone who can, who's who's heard those sorts of sounds, they are so distinctive. Uh, uh, but then, but then, okay, it's great. You can probably hear the distinction, but how would you visualize that distinction? <laughs> Right. And, uh, and of course, this is a topic you, you have shared a lot about and um, hopefully we'll share a lot more about over, over time here. Um, but uh, and, and you shared in in the, um, the leanatoart.com slash quests. Right. So the, every every quest is out there and um, and you shared sort of like your um, your results and exploration. Oh, yeah. Let me let me pull that up on the screen. Um yeah, so here's from that first quest. I actually included some sketches on thinking about like the the way sound moves through the images, right? <laughs> so I've got that right up on screen, like this tractor, and like I show first, like I draw a line representing like the the high and low pitches of the sound, or rather, or even like the cadence of the sound. Like I think about like, you know, I once heard that piano was described as like uh, the perfect instrument because it's both percussive and uh, what's the other word for it? Like melodic Melodic. at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so like, I think about that when I'm thinking about sound, like, like what's the, what's the percussive element? What's the melodic element? And so I draw a line representing that roughly in my head and then I can assign some kinds of, um, you know, an onomatopoeia to go along with it and in the case of the espresso you can see that i'm thinking about like there's like an ongoing sound there's like a uh a reverberating slow like low frequency sound but then there's these puffs that happen in the the 
as the thing is, uh, mm -hmm. is the espresso is brewing. And so now I can, you know, draw the sound. And then finally, yeah, I, I, oh, wow, I went all the way with this and even designed like <laughs> full on sound. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, this, I'm, I'm this a one This is why I wanted to walk through this example. Yeah, yeah. I'm a, a perfect setup for where we're exploring next. <laughs> thinking about quest. Yeah, because I kind of went out of my way to like, okay, this is how hard you have to think about this, everybody. Because <laughs> the final, the final stage, I actually went into Adobe Illustrator and designed the full-on sound effect as if they were in a comic book. This is a little bit like, all right, how much sound effect can you bench? And you're like, yeah, oh, like. I'd say this to be playful and fun, man. It's wonderful how, how yeah. much you love sound effects. But that's one of these interesting things about these quests is that we pick something that we love so much and we love the practice and the excitement of the learning and the development of it. You know, it's kind of a trap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and, and honestly, the, the examples would go on and on. We did 11 of these. We didn't mm -hmm. quite do 12, like one perfectly for every month, but that was, that's pretty good. Um, a year of essentially, you know, many creative challenges. Mm -hmm. So, many being relative. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that was, that was just it. Is that like... Um, yeah. Okay. Let's let's look at what we what what did we learn from from doing this? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Oh. Well, uh, we were. I think we were both ambitious facilitators and participants. Mm -hmm. um, I in facilitating this experience, and as much as I wrote, I typed out of my own fingers. This should take five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. I. Didn't I? <laughs> that went right out the window. Like, you know, five minutes. Why not fifty minutes? Why not five <laughs> hours? Honestly. Yeah. Right. Am I right? Hey, learning's great. <laughs> Let's really go for it here. And um, so it didn't vary, right? Like, but but at the same time, it just the 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 scope of participation and facilitating this. Um, it 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 really got out of hand overall Com compared to like what it was meant to be. It's not, it, it, it sort of went a different direction. It was like, it's, it was good at something, but the main intent that we set out to do, it wasn't a warm up, right? It was like a, mm -hmm. it was really like a, like a workshop, like a deep lesson to yeah. really engage with, with, uh, with one of these different uh, endeavors we would describe. So, um, and, and, I, and, and, and some, some leaners really connected with this, right? Like we got like some people who were really like all in on th that, that level of participation. But, um, I mean, let's, let's not, you know, t totally, um, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say either of us are poo pooing what we did. It's just that we, we presented a fairly, a fairly costly and intense kind of activity rather than what we intended to do. And, and, and some people connected with that. And I think, yeah, I mean, so these are great workshop uh, activities. These are mm -hmm. great activities for a variety of other learning experiences. They're not the greatest warm-ups because they're not five-minute things. Or, <laughs> you, you know, yeah, it's, it, um, it's possible, sure, right? So if, it, but there was something about the entire package that sort of through the brevity out the window pretty fast in mm -hmm. um and it, we weren't alone it was other folks were getting into it like that as well which is great right i mean we're we're you know kindred spirits probably the folks who would tune into this kind of show and whatnot that's that's neat but mm -hmm. it's not neat at the thing we were that we set out to do right so um and then i thought i think it's interesting too in parallel like so the quests you know happened from 2013 to 2014 and then you know time passes and we do we do continue to engage with different creative challenges we start um art sound off and that kind of thing and over time there's been like you've demonstrated this really well like you have come up with like i don't know like what your heuristic is or or your 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 but demonstrated in your practice when you engage in a creative challenge that has a large amount of investment it's it's a business choice right and you're you're getting a product out of that 
this is me observing what you do. I didn't, I don't know. Like, what, what do you think? Is that like pretty explicit? Part yeah. Of I, yeah. I, that, that's fair. Yes. I, I try to leverage any creative challenge I participate in to also produce something that is uh, a minimum viable product to test drive an idea and also have something that I can replicate something that I can reproduce after that experience. Um, I'm not, I'm not disparaging anybody who does it purely for the learning experience. It's just, I, I like to get a little bit more if I can. Um, I'm, I'm actually looking down the barrel of this with mini comics day this year, because we're going to be doing a mini comics day here in Columbus. And we're not entirely sure whether or not we're going to have the full eight hours. We might have to do a smaller version. And then that, that set me on my heels. Like, Oh, if I don't have the full eight hours, I can't do a whole mini comic that is at a level where I can reproduce it. You know, I might have to do something like that old Chud with a dream mini comic, which is like very, very, it's like a thumbnail, right? Um, it's so it becomes an exercise and it has an artifact in that I have some evidence that I en engaged with something creatively and solved the problem, but I can't then immediately turn around and start making photocopies of it. Right. Am I okay with that? You know? Um, but in the way I've solved that problem in the past is like, well, how to, and this is the sort of the math I'm doing in my head with mini comics today is like, okay, how can I do a, as minimal, uh, front ended work as possible? Like do a little bit of work ahead of time. So like set me up for success. And then how do I chunk things out so that I can do absolutely the minimal amount of work so that keep it within the parameters of the scope of the time constraint of the project. So in the case of this year, this last year, I did the Baron von Bear pitch. I took what I think all the all the assets that need to go into making a pitch, break it into 31 hours of labor, and then distribute it over the month of October. And that's how I did the Bear and Vivera mini comic the year before. And the year before that, I did a Bolt and Fleet mini comic. Same idea. Um, how can I work within hour a day for this creative challenge to produce something that so Yes, but then, but that that's also outside of the scope of what we th were originally thinking for quests, right? Or no? Certainly. Uh I'm just saying that that this this is sort of a thing I can observe in parallel over the years since since the quest, and I think what you're demonstrating in a way is that time is money, and mm. you know you're you're a creator and uh, you know and an artist who's in business. So this sort of warm up, this sort of uh, creative challenge, wh whenever something's you know is is being sort of hired by, by you as as this is going to be part of your practice, um, hopefully it has that kind of well it fits with your business, right? And so a lot of creative challenges um, would get to the point of a large enough investment where that's competing with other things that could that you could do to to um, to make money with your business. Oh, good de good description of the tension at work there. That's really really well thought out. Is that like the old expression "time is money"? That that matters in this situation. Yeah. Well, and so throw in the other angle is, is that so developing greater capacity for rapidly creating, solving different kinds of problems is an asset too, right? So you're, mm -hmm. build, you're building up yourself as, um, and, and your, your capabilities are what you trade as an artist. And this is part of how you, how your business works. Yeah. So if these warmups were truly warmups, then they're just, then, then they are that practice, right? So then we kind of get to this whole, um, recent times of thinking about uh, ev evolving the podcast and thinking about the quests and whatnot and, and a little bit of like, well, what if we tried this again? Um, and we've all, we basically have, I think your strategy for making um, creative challenges pro into product development is pretty great. I think it's strong. I admire it. I'm trying to work toward that for my own stuff. But then, but I do think there's this other job. There's this other job of like building habits, practicing things, but not doing it like we did for the quests. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so how do you make the practicing small, repeatable, enticing, useful? And, um, and let's see, like really trying to set us up to succeed with it. Um, because we, and, and like, yeah, enthusiastically embrace the practice aspect of it. It's not product develop, development. It's a capability, experience, and habit development. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um, this goes back to something Brandon Dayton talked about on this very show when we were talking about his sketchbook summer project, um, which he did with his friend Matthew Armstrong. Um, 
which was this notion of, and Brandon used this word, monastic attention to something, meaning that it's not about doing something to achieve any like explicit, concretized, illuminated goal. It's more of doing it for the pure habit of checking in and doing it, right? Um, there's there's this idea, if I could get... Which is slightly, a kind of goal, right? Not to... Yeah, you know. it is. To be fair, it is. It's not... Um, yeah, but it's sort of it's a strat it's a more strategic goal, not as much a like tactical. A tactical, yeah. Pro, like we're getting to this product; it's got to ship, right? That's yeah. I, I've I've kind of like grown fond of this idea very recently of showing up to, th- to certain things with the intended purpose of letting the experience do its work on me. And it, like, it, it, it's going to sound potentially sound strange to a show where we're like, we think hard about this stuff. So you will too. We're very, really big on intentionality and being explicit in our, in reflecting on our behaviors and our, and our habits and, and, you know, refining our methods. And well, you just described the way I've encountered or engaged with creative challenges over the years, but there's also this this notion of showing up and doing the thing without any like um, stated purpose of my own, but to let the experience of the thing sort of do its work on me and let the the subconscious do its work on me. Let that part of my brain have its uh, its say and its experience and its uh, exercise. Um, and I feel like that is something that I would love to bring and I, I feel like that's something that like showing up to form new habits in that way i think i personally would benefit from that um it's something i would look for in doing a new form of quest um we we talked about this a little bit of, of like i want to say like six months to a year ago um the idea of the art meditations which i was doing mm-hmm. in my sketchbook right where you just like draw without the purpose of drawing and the moment starts to take form shift gears start making other shapes but like i got I felt like I was getting a lot of value out of just doing that in my sketchbook, just like taking 15 minutes to do random sketches, written not sketches. It wasn't sketches. It was just random pencil marks on the page. Um, and my, and I, I like, I like that a lot. I, tr- I turned that into essentially algorithmic drawing. And so algorithmic drawing is when you sort of uh, move with a certain set of rules and mm. maybe things can take form and you can adjust the rules as you go. But mm. then, and I've, and I've posted some of those things on occasion where, you know, I made like a triangle, triangle man, which ah, that just yeah. popped out. I don't know how it just started to happen. And I, I'm like, okay, I'm going to commit to this triangle man now that, now that it's happening. But it was the algorithmic drawing of things with, uh, as like um, chevrons basically. Mm. So it's more of a chevron man. Anyway, um, and it's, it's actually it's gender, genderless chevron person, but uh, it was more funny to post it as Triangle Man, though. So the, and, and then I did, I, I did a whole scene with this kind of drawing as well, too, recently. And so, yeah, it, it, that, that's an interesting practice as well. Um, similar territory, but um, where you, uh, uh, like I've seen artists who will draw algorithmically and they'll do just sort of, Honestly, it's like you're putting more Morse code dashes down where you're going, you know, line, maybe long to short lines, long to short lines, long to short lines. And then you just fill a page um, or, you know, uh, vertical, vertical, horizontal, vertical, vertical, horizontal, whatever. Yeah. Just repeat a pattern. And that's what I would call algorithmic drawing. Which 20-year-old me would so not be on board with that. <laughs> 20-year-old me would be like, what are you doing? Why would you even bother doing that? You're not even drawing a thing anymore. But like 45-year-old me is like, oh, that sounds relaxing. That sounds like it'd be a way to like really get my drawing hand warmed up for the day. Um, yeah. Anyway. And, and I think yeah. that's where we're going, where it's there, there's sort of a variety of, of um, emotional and mechanical and intellectual experiences that we could facilitate in the small if mm-hmm. we if we do it with that spirit of sort of like the meditative drawing but also not just drawing we could do this with a variety of things and we can we can delve into more of the how this could work or how we're going to experiment with this uh in in the second half but then you know all under the idea of let's say if we're <sighs> trying to 
not trigger just we want to sneak this past our ambition our ambitious um uh ambitious mm, art and business gatekeeper in your in our own heads right so it's it's sort of where it's sort of like it's fine for to for this capability and this practice to to happen and in fact guess what just two minutes at a time right so we'll just do two minute practices and it'll be about being focused doing less and um then noticing how this affects us over time and we've got mm. a, again like a little list of how that could work uh coming up but we're just calling this what placeholder name lean into art two minute practice sessions there we go wow so you you just teased the second half and here we go mm -hmm. so uh all right we'll come back in two minutes uh, about a minute and a half so less than less time than a lean into art practice session um and we're going to demo it live on the show and all right but before we do that we have to thank some people who make this show possible and those people are the folks who support us on Patreon. Yes, patreon.com slash lean into art is the website. What is it? It is a way for you to give us a monthly upvote. If you say, hey, I believe in Robin Jersey and I believe in what they do. I want to help make it more sustainable. How do I do it? Well, you can do it for as little as a, a dollar a month. And actually, you can cancel any time. So you can just do like a one-time donation and just you know, consume all the behind-the-scenes content wait for the end of the month to roll around and then cancel your subscription or you can do an ongoing subscription like these people that i'm about to thank right now becca hilburn thank you becca for believing in us and what we do you can find becca on twitter and on all social media as natto soup and greg horvath thank you greg it means a lot to us you can find greg on twitter at igm horv 77 and stephen black thank you stephen uh, thank you so much for believing in us you can find stephen on twitter at blacks sideshow two s's in the middle there and these will all be linked in the show notes by the way uh cameron callahan thank you cameron for believing in us and what we do you can find cameron on twitter at cam callahan and finally stephen stone bush thank you stephen you can join them all at patreon.com slash lean into art where you will find all the shows we make as well as the extra leans the shows that we record only for people who support us on patreon those posts become an open mic thread where you can talk about whatever you want in a safe place with fellow leaners patreon.com slash lean into art is the website Thank you to everybody who supports us there. It means a lot. It sure does. What an awesome signal to get. All right. Uh, I need to hit new music. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? What? I'm going to do it twice. <laughs> no way. <laughs> <laughs> Old style. <laughs> I always try to figure out like two different ones, but why not? Why not do it? Why not hit, hit the Dragon Ball twice? All yeah. right. Why not? Why the heck not? Um, so let's do, let's see. What do you want to do a two minute practice session? Mm. So okay. setting a timer. A yeah, timer. we've got a few options um, in, in the show notes that uh, what would you, what would you like to do for a timed two minutes? A time two minutes. Well, I really like the you idea wanna... of the, t the tiny doodle. I mean, that tiny one's. Doodle. It looks like it'd be great on, it'd be great for a video podcast. Uh, not so great for an audio podcast, but we could always do a video one and then an audio one. But let me get my timer up. Um, well, we will describe. Yeah. Of course. So, all right. So are you going to, you're going to run the timer? I'll run the timer. You go first. Do you want to do like you do a two minute doodle and I do a two minute doodle? See what they look like, how we approach it differently. All right. Uh, yeah, sure. Why not? Or we could do it at the uh, same time. I suppose we could. We got a split screen. Let me. All right. So um, let me move my camera around so I can. Um, Not sure. We look at my sticky note. So Ooh. explain explain to me, Tiny Doodle. Do you have any parameters you want to put on this? <sighs> yeah, that's the thing. That was um, so a bit of a brainstorm here on the prototype prompts. Um, so Tiny Doodle. Let's um, where it's a it's a per, it's a visual prompt. So let's choose a visual problem. How about um, we could do um, maybe okay. I'm thinking like so. What are some visual problems like the rhythm of a the rhythm of a page? So you can you know tiny thumbnails for the rhythm of a page. 
where someone um, someone stubs their toe and yells, ouch, my foot, right? Um, or, or maybe they've, yeah, what, you know, and why do they get in that situation, all that kind of stuff. So it's just about thinking about um, depicting things and coming up with ideas quickly because coming up with ideas quickly is a general skill set asset to to um to build off of because if you can come up with them quickly you can come up with um a variety and then use other parts of the creative um you know creative process where you can go from um because i don't know I, I loosely borrow my creative process mental model from the that book um oh what was the gentleman so someone van oick uh whack on the side of the head his whole creative process thing where it's sort of you've got the uh the whatever the explorer the artist the um mm, the judge and the explorer the artist judge and then someone who's really stern about shipping so basically you 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 gather ideas you refine and shape them you tighten it up and then ship it whatever if you practice and so like the practice um this practice sessions, we can have dozens of practice sessions over time as we generate these things for any one of those four aspects of, of like creative life cycle stuff. So, okay. Um, so yeah, this would be probably more the, you know, quickly generate quickly generate. Okay. So, um, how about then we just go with, uh, something that's like, uh, deceptively very simple. Okay. What do you so sh show me two minute doodle. Show me what, frustration looks like okay. when i see the word frustration what does that look like to you all right all right so tell me what let's you get your camera ready totally making this up let's see what happens hmm. all right let me be able to do this okay tell me when I, you're ready to hit the timer i am ready to tiny doodle what does frustration look like all right, ready, set. Oh, I got to put two minutes on the clock. That usually helps. Yep. Two minutes, two ready, minutes. set, go. Okay. So I am starting with, and I'm using my multi pen with all the colors because color, color is a pretty good signal as to how things feel. And I'm using really scratchy lines. Let's see if I can get that better centered in the shot. I'm thinking of something, something huddled over. I'm starting with purple because purple is the color of mystery and ambiguity in a lot of fiction. I won't go into all the details why, but it's something I teach in my classes all the time. Inside Out, the movie, the Pixar movie about kids with feelings in their heads, fear is purple. Now I'm going to draw this character completely closed in by things like they're like in a small space as a matter of fact i'm gonna have the ceiling of the space pressing down on them frustration feels like immobility frustration feels like not knowing where you can go i'm still working with purple but i'm gonna start getting some other colors in here in a second with my multi-pen and i'm gonna put some nice cool blue behind them 46 seconds to go to go okay <clears throat> and blue blue is cold blue is you know in Baron Von Bear there's a reason I chose blue as the wisp of time and cold wow. blue is static blue is calm blue is sad 20 seconds alright gotta get some red in there now because frustration is also an internal anger that's roiling around but i don't like to let it out in that loud of a way six seconds and two one and time okay, okay. so hold up mine to the camera there's what i came up with for my drawing all right here's what move yours over to the right just a tiny bit rob to the right of the camera there we go <laughs> you got really personified i went more uh you know dc yeah. comic swamp thing from the 80s kind of abstraction 
It's a bit of a, um, yeah. So I ended up going with, uh, so kind of a go-to abstract uh, humanoid thing I, I do is the the H-ball characters, which they're kind of a combination of a stick figure and a flower sack kind of thing where they can do different postures and whatnot. And so I just have someone waiting to get to a resource, which I didn't figure out what it is. Cause I thought first I started to draw like in the back, like, Oh, maybe it's a bus coming and whatever. So, but like someone wouldn't be seeing another person endangered or stopping getting on a bus or something as that it would, I think it may be more, you know, fear or, or other urgency where, where this, it would be, um, yeah, frustration is sort of um, like someone else is is sort of wasting this other person's just time, right? Mm, yeah, up, yeah, uptight. Yeah, frustration. And, uh, you're you're providing the context of like what non frustration looks like too. <laughs> yeah, and so right there, there's is a contrast of of like uh, complacency and you know obliviousness for, you know, versus the you know, someone being you know pretty pretty uh, put out. Yeah. So, all right. All right. We just demoed it. So. And that's it. That's it. <laughs> and there's your two minute Lena Twark quest. If we call it, even call it a quest anymore, what do we call that? A two minute practice. Two minute practice session. Uh, do we want to. So well, let's let's reflect on that. I mean, or did we do yeah. the reflection with that? Yeah. Well, so, well, you can share more examples and other ideas and stuff coming up here, and and other like themes and how it's you know we're going to try to make it you know, make it well rounded and all that. But uh, mm -hmm. but yeah, how, how do you feel about that practice session? Um, I felt like the stakes were pretty low, uh, but I felt like the opportunity for expression was high. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense like there was an opportunity there to play with my chops as far as like being intentional about the things that i choose like when i first thought of frustrate like my very 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 first thought was something flipping like table flipping kind of thing so something with a movement of like arms moving forward and up not even not necessarily a person but something with that kind of movement and i thought no frustration for me feels more like something that's that has a lot of potential energy that can't move that's that's when I feel frustrated. Uh, so that then that's when I started like just moving my pen back and forth to create the hunched over figure of whatever it was. Um, and I think I enjoyed the live rationalization of my creative choices as I went. <laughs> it 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 makes me feel like okay, I'm moving in a direction and I'm building more confidence in moving that direction by explaining to myself why I'm moving in that direction. So I don't know if like. Because you didn't talk aloud during yours because I was kind of hogging the mic. So how do you feel about your experience? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, well, I unpacked it afterward. So um, that's the thing. It only took two minutes. I was just waiting in line for two minutes. So I was not like this, you know, I wasn't in this situation. You know, this is not, the person in front is not Jersey on the mic. For me and mine. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, uh, uh there's a there's a layeredness and a progression to to thinking through and creating making choices and creating relationships and and visualizing and then and layering to to get enough symbols and meaning on top of the 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 thing because the goal is to communicate to communicate to visualize uh, what what frustration is but just in a tiny doodle and in only two minutes so mm -hmm. I enjoyed that it's completable I I like the um uh, being able to have an instance of that done and i can't help but think about it in contrast to the quest <laughs> it's, it's so yeah. much so like this is useful like and i feel like we will together and as a community we'll come up with like a ton of useful practice sessions and uh, like that, it feels good. Like that two minutes, because I, I facilitated hundreds of two minute experiences throughout, you know, well, probably thousands of two minute experience across hundreds of workshops and stuff, right? So I know it works. <laughs> you have to, like, you, you're constantly doing like time boxed things and asking people to embrace some kind of uh, choice and expression during that. 
mm-hmm. uh, brief uh, piece of time. And well, that's just a, it's a useful mechanism. It's a, for, for a lot of things. So I, I'm feeling that I'm feeling like, okay, this, the, the mechanics, I feel good about it. It's like, I've, I feel like this, like we just kicked the tires or what have you like uh, did a, did a play test on a thing. And it's like, this is reasonable. Mm-hmm. Question. Um, let's try to do some uh, perspective taking uh, on people who would be engaging with this and like just hearing from the back of the room, sort of like that one person going like, yeah, but what is this? Again, going back to the whole time is money thing. What is this? What what utility do you see this serving you um, in a broad sense as a creative person? Hmm. Okay. It, it depends on your interests. So this is this uh, one of the prerequisites to, um, to want to pick this up would be um, like a desire for development, personal and professional development. And if you have that desire, then you're going to think, well, okay, do you have the capacity to act on that? And so you could, you could take full size workshops, you could go to conferences, you could go take classes, you could go lo- lots of different directions. Um, but then there are still like every one of those experiences is, is affected by the habits you bring to it, right? So why, why practice? Why, why work on, you know, like these little building blocks of, of experiences and, and does it matter if they're so small? Uh, I think believing in the, 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 des- the desire to develop and practice and knowing that in, the, in your art and the business of your art, you are your ability to act on your own intentions and express things and whatnot is pretty crucial. So over time, you will accumulate uh, new abilities and uh, new tolerances, skills, contexts, ex- uh, questions, experiences that you will carry with you into solving those new things. That, that next class you take, the, the, you know, the, the next gig you land or um, time that you're pitching a thing or other things like we're going to practice a lot of kinds of stuff related to um, this, this whole endeavor. So um, the practice builds capability and to do it in this way, like, so why do this? So I am practice on my own. Cool. Um, we're here to encourage and that's optional. You don't, if, uh, but yeah, you know, we're here to do, to encourage. So if you like that, um, you're welcome, you know. Uh, so uh, let's see. So the practice, the practice can feed into and help the other things, the products and the services and stuff that you do. So, and it's not going to be a, th- a thing where like one, two minute practice. Oh, I got a, I have a new product. I have a new service I can offer. Mm, yeah. Yeah. It. That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good point is like it, it removed any tension I might feel that I was describing earlier with mini comic day, right? It's like, Oh, but I got to make a product out of this thing. Oh, well, but there's no way I can do that with two minutes. So don't even try. Um, Or that, or that development looks very different. It's a Mm -hmm. longer term thing. So you're looking to potentially, okay. If you're diligent about you practice in certain ways that, and you're collecting it. Great. You're scrapbooking and journaling and what have you. And you may have a, a journal of all sorts of practices eventually. That's great. It'll take some time to build that up. And that's the point is that it's not meant, it's, it's separate from that other like more uh, time and attention expensive process as it needs to be and should be, which is developing your regular products and services. This falls outside of that. Okay, so you hinted earlier that we had a whole list Rather, you, you provided a list of like potential um, two-minute exercises, which raises the question for me, well, what do we practice? Like, is this all going to be just sticky note sketches? Are there other kinds of things? Um, okay, so we're going we're gonna to problem solve and break all sorts of big problems into tiny, tiny, interesting practices that, that can be done in two minutes. Uh, that's what we're committing to if, if you're up for it. Um, that would, uh, let's see. So I'm like, I've, I've described this in a couple of ways, but, um, 
let's see. So this smaller practice can be useful uh, for is, is skill and habit building for with anything from writing, drawing, communicating visually um, to handling planning and strategy or the hustle of your business. And it's all about trying to address lots of things, little bit, tiny, tiny bits at a time as in just explore how you can continue to grow to be a viable, healthy, creative person. So you're, you're establishing some um, principles in there too then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so some of the what would be like, we'll try to do things that are um, like literally like managing your business type stuff. Like, oh, um, let's say we need to practice breaking, breaking big tasks into small tasks. Great. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll make that a thing. And mm -hmm. it'll be a little practice. It'll be a throwaway thing and that'll happen. How we practice this stuff, it's going to, it's, it'll be mechanically, it will come into a lot of, um, you know, maybe a lot of visual thinking and expression. So writing on small stuff, uh, but also prose. So we'll be, we'll be typing up stuff too. Uh, maybe even sometimes a spreadsheet, sometimes, you know, so it'll be all, all kinds of tiny experiences that, that again, will help. Uh, because honestly, so if you think about, um, let's say you get very, very comfortable about the idea generation thing. That is a superpower you can carry with you to a lot of different contexts. So you're in a situation where you need to name a product. You're in a situation where you need to, um, let's see, help with, um, you know, describing, uh, describing something so that a group feels more empathy for who you're trying to help. All right. Mm -hmm. And the, your general ability to say, I'm just going to, I'm going to make marks with my mind. I'm getting this stuff out of my head, whatever comes out, comes out and I meet whatever comes out and I, and I, and I deal with it and get, uh, practiced and comfortable with that. And now you can carry that with you with all sorts of different things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, practicing and uh, keeping active creative thinking has a lot of applications beyond just communicating visually, right? Mm -hmm. Thinking creatively means that you can also like imagine potential new ways to solve pro all kinds of problems. Like for instance, like, oh, well, our business uh, is losing our landline. We've got 12 employees. We don't want to give out just anybody's cell number. How do we solve this problem, right? Well, what are our options? Now I can begin to investigate that idea. Exactly. And so now like the practicing investigating can be a kind of creative se a session, right? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're going to hit lots of different things over time it'll accumulate right i mean mm, mm. yeah so okay so then uh how about you know so we, we we talked about the mechanism of quests and you think about i'm sure lots of folks have read different habit um developing books and ideas and this is borrowing from a lot of different places but the idea would be the process you keep it to two minutes you choose the thing you're going to practice. So you commit to the, you commit to doing this small and then also commit to the thing specifically that you want to practice. And it could be something that we share. Maybe, maybe you're helping us generate prompts. That's awesome. Ah, that would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll be collecting lots of prompts over time and, and generating lots of prompts over time too. So um, this is a, this is one of those kind of parties where you, you know, you can just show up or you can bring stuff, whichever. Um, okay. So then, so you have the, you two minutes, what are you going to practice? And then pick a reward, pick something that you're going to, um, reinforce positively what you just did mm. because you want to do it again and keep doing it. <laughs> not that day. It's not going to take two hours and two, whatever, two weeks, two days. No, just two minutes, but still, um, a reward can be something really tiny. So self high five, get up and dance. Um, the, uh, you know, text a friend, woohoo, I did my practice or something like that. Um, or it could just be good job me, right? It's like just words. Words are really useful and really important. 
Uh, so give yourself some, some positive words. Mm -hmm. So do you, do you say anything to yourself to build yourself up? Um, I use, I use visual stuff, right? So like in my ETP, um, whenever I run, I actually, I mean, so my ETP is not just my work tracker. It's like I, there's elements of life tracking that happens in it as well. And so in, in some parts of the, like in my weekly overview page of what I have to do that week, I put a small section for how many days I ran. And so I have this visual marker saying like, okay, you know, I haven't, I haven't done a streak yet <laughs> where it's like, ah, five days in a row. But, um, you know, when, what days I do, I mark and I mark what, uh, um, what distance I went. And when I uh, exceed my expectations, I put emoji on there. I, I mark, I, I grab emotional data on how I feel about that. So, um, so yes, I, I do have some small reward mechanisms in there to help, uh, in, in a very small and almost imperceptible way, sort of give myself a nudge to do it again. That's what it is. It's, it's a kind of ethical nudge and mm. encouraging or encouragement. Um, just tell you something that, uh, do something that builds you up uh, and that uh, something that fills your bucket, right? I don't know. There's a mm -hmm. kid's book that we've been, uh, we, we, we read recently in our house about yeah, the bucket uh, fillers. Yeah. yeah, they use that metaphor a lot with the Captain Seriously project. Um, so like, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, in, in one of the books, they actually mention bucket filling. Um, but mm -hmm. but yeah, they, that that's that in that that school district, that is language that gets used a lot to like, um, positive behaviors, fill your bucket and give you more resources for taking on challenges and helping others. Exactly. So you say like, I'm really thankful that I did some practice. I'm thankful for myself that I could practice. I'm happy to just some kind of thing. So there you go. Mm -hmm. So pick, pick a reward and it can be, and hopefully it is pretty small. I mean, it's not like two minutes of drawing, I'm going to Florida or I'm going to whatever, I'm Disney world. And it's, you know, it's not, you know, winning the world series or what have you. I'm not a sports guy. So, um, <laughs> And I, I, <laughs> I have some friends who will like, they'll just text me when they're at work, right? Like they're, they're at the art desk, like I'm back at work. And then I just give them a thumbs up, right? Like I'm with you, you know, it's a, it's a simple little that's thing. That's great too. If you have, that's what a wonderful thing. So yeah, yeah, texting a friend a high five. It's wonderful. So you've got a lot of the mechanisms uh, in place. Uh, keep it two minutes, choose the thing you're going to practice, pick a reward. Um, you need a method for constraining the time. So what works for you? Do you love timers? Hate them? Whatever. Um, do you want to have a, you know, fast, burn, fast burning candle or who knows, right? There's, um, I did an experiment recently where, you know, I like, I like the command line. I love solving little problems at the, at, in the terminal using, I use Z shell, but uh, bash is great too. It's, a, it's available on a lot of platforms in windows. You can run the, the, um, uh, the Linux subsystem what have mm. you. It's a really friendly way to have like a super robust command line available to you in Windows that's not DOS. DOS is fine, but it's not as powerful as Bash. Anyway, um, so there's, uh, I was like, hey, there has to be a way to play a song for two minutes on the command line. So anyway, I, I, uh, we can, I can tweet that out or what have you too, but basically okay. uh, Apple, uh, Apple Mac has a song, has a tool called AF Play, which is audio file play basically. And then you just give it a T dash T parameter of how many seconds. And um, so that's cool. Just play a song for two minutes. You could play just the song that happens to be two minutes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, lots of options there, but good old timers are great too. I, I like that too, that the giving or, or suggesting that there might be a, a timer that works for you besides having this countdown happening because like I get mixed. So when I do these time box activities in my classrooms, I do like what I was doing during our two minute exercise where I, I give call outs to how much time is left. 45 seconds, 30 seconds. And there's like a few kids who will playfully scream, you know, it's like, Oh, you're freaking me out. You know, but they're, but they're like screaming the way you do on a roller coaster. And there's a couple of kids who are like, Oh, you're, you're freaking me out. Stop talking. <laughs> So, so I know a timer's not everybody's it, friend. It, absolutely, yes. I, I have I've seen this as, as well. Um, it's the point is to not have you um, just immerse yourself in anxiousness two minutes a day, right? It's <laughs> hopefully there's a way to there's a way to do that because the the time 
chunk portion is a powerful part of this because it means it's affordable. It means that it's not a developing a giant product. It, it gives you permission. So two minutes, we use two minutes all the time to do lots of things. And that's wonderful. It's like staring off in space, scrolling Instagram, whatever. I mean, that's fine. But this is it's so it's it's pretty inexpensive is is the thing. And keeping it inexpensive as a to not compete with the other things you do in your business is um it's part of the mechanism that hopefully mm-hmm. makes it um worth coming back to. Mm. All right. Then okay, so you've got a t- timer mechanism and just try it out. Okay. So you've got your idea, jump in. It's only two minutes. So you probably can just go for it right then and there. And so here you time yourself and then do what we just did where, how'd it go? You know, is that, what, what's that going to be like? Because we we're, we're suggesting do this seven times, practice it seven times in a row, different days. Once you've done this then, so like maybe you needed to adjust, maybe you didn't and either way. So you continue on and now you have seven total instances of trying this thing out. Um, now you can do sort of a, a, a brief, fast, hopefully less than two minutes self interview where you can ask, well, how did it feel when you started versus when you're, you completed, do you feel more prepared or less prepared? Um, what would you do differently to, if you're going to practice this again, and you probably will, um, what, um, Let's see. Do you, and then, then it's like, do you want to do anything with these results? Do you, do you want to share them? Um, do you, did you get feedback along the way? Did you do this socially? And how did that aspect go? You know, I, I recently I started running using the Strava app. I don't know if you ever used that one, Rob. Heard of it. I, I, I used RunKeeper for a long time, but then I switched to Strava because I have to because my health insurance requires me that if, if I do want that information to be given to my, doctor and my health insurer health insurer to like give me bonus points you know how all the insurance companies are doing this now like share your data with us so that we can make sure that you're being a good person uh to, to, to eliminate ambiguity on our end so that we're not making bad bets um but anyway so I, I switched to that and one of the things i noticed that it does in the app is um after you do a run is like tell us how you felt about it like it has like a like a seven or eight point scale from like easy to difficult um and it's just like a, just dots choose a dot and I, it gets me thinking, like, I wonder if that'd be worth introducing into it. Like, after you do your two-minute thing, if there's, like, four dots, easy to hard, or how do you feel good to bad about it? Like, where, where's – or even if you want to use a color scheme from, like, you know, cool to warm, something like that. Like, how do you feel about this? So then at the end of the week, you have that quick little data set to look at. Um, or is that adding, like, extra complexity to the thing and, like, making taking it beyond the scope of what it was intended to be? Um, no, it's, I think it's welcome. I think there's, I, I, I would say we could layer, um, optional practices on top of the practice, right? Mm. That's is, uh, what gets you, uh, the value out of your own practice. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I do think that's, um, having some kind of lightweight check-in thing. I mean, that's, I mean, I've facilitated plenty of research like that. It's, it's called a journal study and mm-hmm. it's that, that kind of mechanism is how like, back in this what 70s or 80s when Mihai Csikszentmihalyi created his theory about flow of of optimal human experience and um uh the whole um I mean I think he's one of the people that's like started positive psychology and whatnot right because psychology Mm. was always like hey what's wrong here what's wrong with you and now it's like well what's going well (laughs) and uh how are the successful people you know getting through these difficult things and developing these great capabilities, whatever. And so uh, he did a study with this kind of checking in, right? And so mm-hmm. you check in, you make observations over all this sort of thing, and you see the flow of the ups and downs, and you can get patterns in the data and all that stuff too. So yeah, totally. I mean, you can instrument the process more. I just noticed that that little tiny ask that it does at the end of each of my runs made me a lot more aware of how I feel while I'm running. Um, it's like normally I just like turn on a podcast or audio book real loud and just get lost in the activity. I don't want to know how my body's saying you're going to die. You're going to die. You're going to die while I'm in that first mile, you know? 
Uh, but then like when, once I started paying attention to that question, I'm like, yeah, you know, how did it go today? Yeah, that one felt pretty okay. That one felt good. Now, now that gets me wondering, okay, what were the conditions that led me to like engage with this run today that it was better than it was yesterday? Because yesterday really sucked. You know, I put like scored it really low. Okay, what's different? Oh, well, you know, I drank a lot more water the night before, that kind of thing. Um, so that's great. So um, you can collect uh, collect a daily experience, right? Check in. So you, you did a daily, you, you did your practice. How do you feel about it? Um, that's, that is a, that is a powerful thing. And um, yeah, sounds like a good idea. Um, all right. So just taking it out there. Mm, optional daily. How do you feel? Note. Yep. I, I like the idea of you just like finding your own way to score it. Mm hmm. It, uh, so yeah, it's, it's kind of funny having attaching some kind of, um, you know, observation to the, to the experience. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, I certainly, you can throw an emoji on there. You could throw, mm -hmm. um, a scale of, you know, one to five classic, you know, really, really loved it, really hated it, whatever. Your, yeah, I, I would say I would heavily, heavily emphasize you're scoring your feelings about the experience, not about the product that you made, because making a thing is less important in the situation is, is the experience of making the thing. But but also you don't have to score it at all, because if it's truly about like just checking in and doing a thing for a habit and a practice, then and going back to like what I was saying at the top of this one about like how I've, I've become kind of enamored of this idea of like showing up and letting the experience shape me maybe you don't want to be that aware maybe you want the like the, the the just the experience to accumulate and then observe after uh you know a set amount of time mm -hmm. yeah and that's uh right i mean you're yeah exploring exploring this idea of, of asking that in a very bite-sized way more frequently it's a similar idea right so mm -hmm. basically in a window of 7 days um it could be like maybe that's a fine middle ground for you um, or maybe that's not enough. I think it's great where, yeah, tuning your practice to not get too expensive because that's part of the point. Um, loving what you do and finding great joy if you're, if you're wired where you enjoy aspects of when it gets difficult. Uh, well, that's what creative challenges are for and, and putting different constraints on projects where they become product development, MVPs and all that. Um, different, that's a different thing um than than this um than this kind of practice so because so maybe it's it's good to to mention the tone right so because yes let's yeah let's, ourselves yeah so the tone of this is we're purposefully trying to be relaxed about this laid back yet consistent uh we're setting ourselves up to succeed by having this helpful pattern that we can repeat to practice lots of habits and do some reflection and keep going. That's it. So sustainability is part of this. Relaxed is part of this. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Consistent too. And so there's, there's the rubric to measure whether or not you want to add any extra flavors to this thing. Does it make it more relaxed? Does it set you up to succeed or are mm -hmm. you introducing elements I do this all the time. Like this is this is just my method of thinking is that like when I start thinking about adding or subtracting things from my my workflow or my habits, it, I go to what am I what are my principles, what I'm trying to accomplish? Does this help me achieve that? No. Well, then maybe I don't need to think about that so hard. Um, and this it's the way I, I think about when I'm writing my stories. Does this get me to what the the big idea I'm trying to accomplish here? Anyway. Sometimes I don't know. And sometimes you just play with it because it feels right. And then you find out way later that, nope, that was a dead end. But uh, but in any case, yeah. Does, yeah, does this or if not, it, it's like, um, yeah, quests were, were this, were a fun adventure that went totally where I didn't meant to go. Yeah. <laughs> in yeah. the beginning. And I, you know, should have seen that sooner, but... <laughs> We also we also get hooked on our commitment sometimes. <laughs> we mm. both do. <laughs> True that. So, <laughs> um, okay. So, did you want to talk about a little bit more about the flavors and ideas for practice sessions, or mm -hmm. um, sure? Okay, cool, cool. What? Um, 
let's see. So thinking about how, like, we just, this is a taste of the intention to make it um, so varied and, and interesting. So this could be about, um, sometimes we get so focused on our work. It, like for me, I sometimes, I, I don't send messages to my friends often enough. Um, or I think about maybe even being a pen pal and sending postcards and stuff like that. So we could, uh, we could make practice sessions about sending messages to friends. A postcard. Can you write a postcard in two minutes? Absolutely. You can. Yeah. Absolutely. You can send, write a postcard in two minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, there's, especially if you do that. like a, if you do like a, like a quick doodle on it too. Right. Hey, thinking of you, hoping you're having a good time. Just wanted to reach out. Here's sure. a drawing of a pig juggling, you know? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Pigs like, hello, I know you. Hope you're doing great. Done. <laughs> this took me two minutes. Sincerely. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, but hopefully it's you put some, reaching yeah. out. Yes, reaching That's out. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Keeping connections going. So, um, okay. So there could be something that you want to do that's a large task and we could practice the, the smaller task aspect of it. So break something down into uh, dabbling explorations, right? So maybe there's a, um, I don't know, a career move, a new skill, a school you're looking at, a place you were thinking about vacationing or what, who knows, right? Um, pick the thing you want to research and then do two minutes of research on it. And then make that a practice. And so if we turn that into a practice session, it probably would be um, I don't know, research for a minute and a half and then uh, take 30 seconds and to write down questions that you have, new questions or insights. So, mm. And that would just move you forward. And we run into stuff like that all the time. Oh, you need to draw something you never saw before or never quite noticed how, you know, the legs of a draft look. I don't know. There you go. Two mm -hmm. minutes of research. Uh, okay. So what about developing your business about the like new possibilities for networking and advertising, generating ideas with this? I'm saying this for me. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I bet all, a lot of you too. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, so that could be as simple as uh, I'm going to go to Facebook. I'm going to look at the events and then they have that section where it's like all the events near you that are listed as Facebook events. And I only say that because I know that a lot of businesses use those. You, like, So I've become um, fascinated by the food truck scene in Columbus. There are a lot of vegetarian options for food trucks here. And so I follow a lot of the food trucks and a lot of them post their events on Facebook, which got me more aware of the fact that when, once I was there, because uh, I don't spend a whole lot, whole lot of time on Facebook, but when, <laughs> While I, when I'm I was- I'm having this fantastic sandwich, it's actually adjacent <laughs> to something pretty neat. Yeah, actually, yeah. So like that, like was something where it's like, oh wow, like a lot of people use this this device or this service to promote things that are happening here. So if I were to like say like, okay, are there any art, cartooning, or art advocacy events happening? And sure enough, I start finding a whole bunch of things like that that I could possibly attend to do some networking. Right? Like I'm just trying to think of something I could do in two minutes, and that's something that's like sort of like queued up and ready to serve me quickly. Like this mechanism of the two minutes, you can do a lot of thinking and um, and and rough creating mm -hmm. in two minutes. So we're going to use the heck out of it for that, for a variety mm -hmm. of things, um, such as uh, like pitching pitching ideas or mm -hmm. like a new message. Maybe you need a, a new tagline, what have you. Maybe you you know want to say the same thing two podcasts in a row. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, right. Joke, pause for laugh. We're good. So, uh, <laughs> hunting for ideas. So, let's see. Hunting for ideas. Hunt, the 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 hunt for. Uh, let's say you're looking for an emotional color palette or uh, con some symbols that remind you of whatever. And so, we'll make that make that another type of of mini research uh, expedition. Right. Lots of different possibilities for mini research expeditions. And then, you know, different activity about the beginning and end about filtering what you find and all that kind of stuff. Um, what about uh, like, so you're thinking about developing a new habit or uh, learning a new thing and you can, you know, and getting exposure to that where maybe it's um, a medium. Mm. Uh, right. So you can break that down into multiple practice sessions of 
um, you know, shop for it, order it. Um, trying out trying out trying out a different tool set yes um i i keep going back to this thing that i did in 2010 where i taught myself to use the brush pen just by doing a daily warm-up sketch where i tried to limit the ambiguity by saying okay you're gonna draw things that are easy for you to draw you're to draw you know um things that you enjoy drawing so it had to be fun it had to be easy and don't get too hung up on what the final thing is and just like uh, what you and I shared them as a trail of process, right? So like it was like some kind of social media type thing that I could put up. Well, 2010 was, there, yeah, there was a little bit of social media at that time. No Instagram, I don't think. Anyway, but it was something I could put on my blog or on social media to say like, hey, here I'm checking in with another thing today to give you evidence that I am an artist who creates art on a regular basis. But it was also a way for me to uh, very safely learn the requirements of using a brush pen. So when we were talking about doing these sticky note drawings earlier, I was like, oh man, imagine if I was like, what if I took like Wally Wood's 22 panels that always work and tried to do a thumbnail sketch of each one of those 22 panels in my own voice over the course of a month. And now I've got something I can post on Instagram, you know, every day or almost every day over the course of a month, right? Um, but so that would be like practicing my storytelling chops, but you could also, I can imagine doing it with like, okay, I'm going to do two, a two minute watercolor th sketch just because two minutes, there's no way I, I can succeed. So let's fail with watercolors for two minutes <laughs> just to get a sense of some experience and exposure to the tool. So it's not like a, um, you know, a, a wild and unimagined negative space. Absolutely. So you're, you're, perp you're accumulating experience. This mm -hmm. is one of the huge, this is the asset that builds over time through this kind of practice. Mm -hmm. And it won't turn into a, a new product instantly or a new thing to trade in right away. But keeping at it, that's the point. So things like, yeah, I mean, uh, heck, uh, like when I was first starting out with uh, Copic markers, I'd, I would have benefited from this kind of practice. Um, then, and, and even now, like I, I, I could see, uh, hitting, you know, getting, getting to new, um, new capabilities and, and, and whatnot, like, or adding highlights with, so, so make a scribble and then add highlights with, um, you know, uh, whiteout or something, right. Um, do a, make a blob, turn it into something, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. So, um, oh, well, how about, uh, some, you know, some writing? What if mm -hmm. you're writing a couple of sentences about why the thing you're working on is great? Like, why do you believe in it and how does it help other people? Those sentences are gold and you can use them for a lot of things. So describing your, uh, your art service or, uh, your, your art advocacy, your, your, your product that you're making, what have you. I mean, this is really handy, uh, mm -hmm. to be able to make the case for it in a, uh, in an approachable way, that's not about um, it's not about you. It's about what others find the the value in it and stuff. So you do that for seven days in a row. You will probably have some piece of a of a case that is really strong to to base a new ad campaign on or, or something. So again, going to my experience with Last Inktober when I was doing that Baron von Bear pitch is that whittling down or rather like siloing out the whole project in one hour chunks meant that I only had an hour at any given time to really attend to the writing of the prose of the pitch. And that's the part that I've always found the most difficult. And then I discovered through that compression or rather that friction that I created was that, oh, part of the frustration that I felt was the fact that I was getting in my own way. And the moment that I had like this ticking clock and I had to ship something today in order to do my check-in, uh, I got out of my own way and just started writing, right? And then after, once I had a big mess of text, this like this 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 disgusting you know pool of jello on a table of of words i was i was able to sift through the next day and go like okay what are the three main points here right okay now i got three main points now i can outline it now i can turn it into something but um there was that discovery of and it was that slow accumulation of like you know regular check-ins on the thing that revealed the idea to me whereas when you're standing there facing the big empty thing sometimes you can talk yourself out of it or get in your own way of doing it um, at least that's my experience so i say that just because like writing prose has always been an especially uh difficult and frightening project for me 
Yeah, I, I don't think you're alone in that. Um, <laughs> that I uh, I don't even know what I would say as far as writing prose. It's it's one of those things that uh, I believe in myself. I know I can do it. I have I have writing chops, and still have so many hangups. I don't even know what I I I I, I get through. I make the projects happen, but then having like little. Con- I use like little survival habits to like get myself through a writing assignment. Um, and it's, it is the, like, like you described, like the whole um, just, you know, getting the words out, re- letting the ideas reveal themselves. And it's almost like having a conversation with the writing as I'm mm-hmm. writing. Yeah. And then, um, you know, and trusting that doing that will lead to uh, lead to clarity and, and something something wor- that, that others will benefit from in the end. Mm. But oof, duh, is it a process? Um, <laughs> and well, so here you go. Like, this is a good place to practice that and, you know, keep, keep honing. Um, honing the, the general uh, comfort and habit and abilities to engage with that kind of task. So, which we we'll, we'll apply this to just a, a broad variety of spaces. If, if the, hopefully this list has given you a sample, it's like thinking visually, um, dealing with pros, dealing with um, uh, anything from different stages of the creative life cycle, things like uh, um, organizing ideas and critiquing ideas, adjusting things. So like, it's going to be creating things that don't exist. It's going to be dealing with things that do exist. So, um, you know, take your current tagline, make, um, make as many new instances of it as you can in two minutes, whatever. So, um, or minute, or 90 seconds and then rank them in the last 30 seconds, what have you. Um, lots of ways and things that we'll explore. So uh, what, how does that sound, Jersey? What do you think? That sounds reasonable. Um, I'm curious how this will, how we will incorporate this into the Lena Tart project as such. Mm-hmm. Um, whether that will be like a weekly, there's gonna be, here's like the two minute exercise to try out this week. Or if it'll be something that's more, um, you know, free form, everybody figure out their own way to do it. And we'll just have like a section of the show where we talk about the two minute more exercises that people have shared. Mm-hmm. But I'm, I'm thinking we'll figure that out very soon. Yeah, I'm thinking in order to get it kick, kicked off and rolling and also to, yeah, I, I, we'll have to, we'll, yeah, so stay tuned. We're, we're in the process of kicking it off, right? So it's not like, oh, this was all polished and finished. Nope, it's in, it's in <laughs> progress. But, it's, but it, we're pretty close here. And I think we can do a combination of, um, you know, maybe sharing even like more than one prompt or we're like maybe one prompt across each of our key areas or that we want to help mm-hmm. with development. Uh, because everyone's got different things to practice. And then if, especially if we do like, we generate more prompts in the beginning, we'll have kind of a pool to, to build off of. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll decide. And so how do we disseminate all that stuff? Some of it will be probably this show and some of it probably outside the show. So mm. like our discord. Yes. Good, we have other place places to, where we go. Yeah. Yeah. Good place to converse about that. But also I could see uh, posting some of these um, either maybe the lean into our Twitter or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Then that sounds so, cool. I mean, that, that sounds that this all sounds very sustainable, manageable. It sounds like something that could be, um, that has, has promises a lot of benefit. Um, and at the very least, minimally, the minimal benefit is the satisfaction of introducing a habit, a practice into your life. Um, cause I think that's, that's one of the other things like that I personally have struggled with throughout my career is this endeavor offers a lot of flexibility in that you can do it in a lot of ways and a lot of places and at a lot of different kinds of schedules, which means that there's a certain amount of discipline you have to introduce in order to, you know, see anything through. Um, so any kinds of habits that you can introduce are usually in my experience, uh, well, habits that promote positive outcomes, (laughs) because there's lots of negative habits you can take on. Um, you know, tend to have a um, uh, a, a resounding effect. They 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 contribute to one another and help overall. Uh, not to turn you into full on robot, but in terms of just like getting you 
I noticed that it's easier for my brain to switch gears when I have more positive habits formed because like, okay, well now it's time for me to do this, this particular task um, versus a lot of that Stephen Pressfield resistance kicking and going like, oh, I got to do that today, you know? Yeah, certainly. There, the, This is potentially yet a new thing to feel resistance about, yet hopefully um, it's hopefully there's a combination of there's enough of a system that is, um, you know, easy to approach. So, you know, picking your timing mechanism, picking what you're going to practice and then, um, picking some way to acknowledge and, you know, reinforce what you are doing and like pick the reward like that. That's part of that's the, that, that is a, I know it may sound optional. It's like, ah, I, I don't need to, I don't need a good job or, you know, add a boy, add a person, whatever, you know, add a girl. I don't, I, I, it's two minutes. So what? It's like, okay, fine, maybe. But I bet, you know, that there's a, there's a reason why positive psychology exists and has, <laughs> it, you know, it's, there's a reason why there's, you know, honestly, user experience design and all that kind of, and the kinds of choices where you, you refine, you take away friction from things and also create, um, you just positively reinforcing moments, like use that on yourself. Like, yeah, you're not a robot, but like, um, you're a professional. So, and, and if you, you are, you've, you've listened this far, you're into some kind of idea of professional slash personal development. So yeah, here you go. Yeah. This is a way to do it. That's very, uh, uh, repeatable, um, affordable time-wise and, um, and also tool. Well, like we're, we're not going to pick you know, like spend some weird things to, you know, practice. Like this is going to be a very attainable resource wise and whatnot too. Let me wrap up that, that thought too, with this thought. I think this is kind of interesting is that another thing that you and I, I think we've had a funny relationship with is this notion of waiting for permission to do something. And when you are in a profession or when you're exploring the skills needed to be part of a profession or a field, um, I think it's safe to say that imposter syndrome is a thing that most of us feel most of us feel that at one point or another like what am i doing here um oh well i'm not a professional oh well i'm not x oh, i don't have this kind of degree oh i don't have this many the, these little artifacts of evidence to suggest that i have any right to be here publishers haven't told me that i belong here right we can find all sorts of language and our brains are really tricky that way to like talk us out of engaging with different communities um, because we haven't gotten permission from whatever we perceive as being the governing body. Um, I would submit that introducing any kind of practice like this gives you sort of an antidote to that in that you are, you are generating evidence of your commitment to a thing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, maybe I don't have this particular, you know, uh, authority quote unquote, recognizing or granting me that permission, but I've generated material that suggests that I have, that I've given myself permission to be here. So that would be something that I would look forward to as well. Oh, yes, absolutely. So like this, this is going to be um, like, hopefully building off of things that you already experience as, as strengths where, or, or emerging strengths, but also things that you, you may feel, you know, more resistance because of that kind of permission thing. Uh, like, how do you identify, like, you're like, you know, at, this, at different points in our, um, in our process and projects, I, I know, like, um, I, I have ran from the idea of writing, and also from embracing more aspects of, of um, just having the, the, like, a more robust business practice, right? That's, uh, I mean, you're not doing your, your, yourself as a professional or your audience any favors with it, with that kind of thing. And, uh, and you're like, we, we can find constructive ways to start to engage with all those different kinds of aspects in, 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 in sort of just saying, well, this is a multi hat kind of wearing, um, time that we're in and also uh, endeavor that we choose to pursue. So it's, so hopefully we're giving ourselves permission to start the dabbling, the dabbling, not being too daunting because it's quick and easy, relatively speaking. But um, anyway, so yeah, it's, there you go. Big old invitation to practice new stuff. Cool. Well, that you fulfilled the show's mandate, Rob. <laughs> 
providing big old invitations to start practicing new stuff. That's that's one big of the big invitation. Practice small stuff sustainably. <laughs> yeah, this is not the quest. <laughs> invitation. This practice. This. For those who are listening to the audio, I extended my arms all the way out for the first part, held my fingers close together for the second part. Exactly. So for those of us yes. visual learners. That's okay. Okay. So um Fine. what do you think? Final thought? Uh yeah. We're heading there. All right. I think we're heading for final thoughts. So okay. So in about a minute or two. In the time it takes to do one of these practices, we'll be back with our final thought and wrap up this episode. But before we do that, we got to thank some other people who make the show possible. And those people are us. We make the show possible. And uh, we make all sorts of things and then bring those thoughts into topics for the Lean Into Art Project. And the other thing that I make that I hope you will check out is another podcast, as a matter of fact. It's a very different podcast in that it is a pop culture podcast. It's me talking about pop culture with a good friend of mine, a friend of mine that I've been I've known for 25 years now. And we've spent most of that 25 years talking about the Transformers cartoon series, all of them, you know, We've followed along with the Transformers since we were kids, and uh, we've decided to sit down and watch an episode a week of the Generation 1 Transformers television show and then get together and sort of reflect on what we think uh, about that show. And it's it's very much, if you enjoy the way I break down and think about story, I get into like really really in the weeds thinking about like speculating on what the writers might have intended what the implications are of different kinds of ideas in the story contextualizing it in the sense of how i responded and reacted to it as a child versus how i think about it as an adult you know if you go back we're i think like uh six episodes in now yeah divide and conquer is the latest episode as of this recording and uh, there are things where I talk about as a child, I really kind of admired the character of Starscream, but then as an adult, I see him for what he is, as like a, uh, a, a, a narcissistic sociopath who is uh, not worth one's admiration at all. But, but I, I, we explore about how as a child, without a very complex or nuanced idea of what self-confidence looked like, all I knew was he thought he was pretty bad. So, you know, it's like he, he walked around telling everybody how bad he was. That must be what self-confidence looks like. So that's the kind of things that we explore on 4 Million Years Later is the name of the podcast. You can find it at 4millionyearslater.com or in any podcatcher you can think of. Just do a search for 4 Million Years Later or just search for my name. Okay, so Rob, um, you did a lot of chunking down problems from really big, complex problems to like more actionable, small problems. And I am guessing that your coaching work is part of what trained you to be able to think in this way. Uh, yeah, I mean, coaching has been uh, studying that uh, last year and getting certified in it and all that. It was a process of uh, sort of connecting with existing discipline capabilities and then uh, just leveling up. It was another kind of leveling up saying that, well, there's like coaching is a mechanism that will help navigate, uh, help like anyone navigate any problem, honestly, because it's, it's like a, it's a, like a facilitation strength that you're not there to prescribe. You're there to explore and facilitate, listen deeply in, and you find specific ways. It's not like you sit back and like every, you know, two minutes you blurt out another prompt saying like, all right, stop about, you know, now that you've, you've, you've specified what you want to get out of the session, please move on to the next thing. It's, um, it is this, in the moment connecting with someone thinking through and sharing their thoughts and that looks different with every person in every conversation you have with that person and so yeah that's the practice of coaching and, and uh i i let's see i don't have the stream up too so do you have shield stenzinger.com up on the screen i have Rob, yeah uh well i have robcoach.me up on the screen but um right. so yeah so i both um i'm a I'm a certified coach and so is my wife, Kate Shield Stenzinger. We have uh, coaching sessions available. You can sign up and you can sign up for a demo session, sign up for, for full sessions or packages. But uh, like, a, like a demo coaching session is, is a way to discover and try out this, this, uh, this coaching process. You're like, well, that sounds interesting. What's that like? Well, there you go. Sign on up. Uh, go to uh, easy URLs for that would be robcoach.me. That'll get you right there. Um, you know, click on the sign up for a session link and uh, you can explore what this coaching thing is like. 
And then did you want to talk about the Where Next Journal? And the because sure. I got those queued up too. All right, so super cool. So the Where Next Journal is this uh, workbook that uh, Kate Shield Stenzinger and I co-created to help with goal planning. Goal planning is you can you can think of and explore from so many different angles as far as. Um, you know, like, well, just list the categories and aspects of your life and what do you want to accomplish there? That's great. But we, we cover it from more angles than that, like thinking about it from your future perspective and, you know, writing about your, what your life will be like in five years if you set forth on the path that you wish to set forth on. And uh, other angles, like what would a day be like if you had no fear? Like just explore that. Like you can explore it as a, in, in two different ways. There is like um, a progression of, this time of day and the kind of friction you face. And if you're feeling fully empowered at your greatest set of capabilities, like what does that look like? So things come up or you can just talk about it when from the things, and there's all these different exercises that are meant to sort of from different angles, help you explore uh, your own goal planning process. And the workbook is, well, there's a 10 page version that's free. So if you go to gum, gum.co slash WNXTJ, you can get the free version. The, full version is um it's only five bucks and that actually has 30 pages has way more facilitation and helps give give you more practice and context you know some warming up a little bit like this practice stuff we were talking about in this episode and if you're like well wait that's a little bit that sounds nice but uh it'd be it'd be even better if if someone could walk me through this like a workshop totally cool. We have that for you. There's a video workshop available where Kate and I walk you through every exercise in this whole thing and help you with uh, more examples and all that. And even then it's, it's not that long. It's just like 28 minutes long, I think. So that is at gum.co slash D G S U D S. That'll get you straight to the workshop, which includes the workbook. And the another, the other option is, well, Hey, um, I happen to be a Skillshare user. Awesome. Search for my name, Rob Stenzinger on Skillshare, and you're going to find the workshops that I offer there, which includes this one I co-taught with Kate Shield Stenzinger, and we call that goal setting using design plus storytelling. So there you go. Coaching and goals. yeah, goal setting, goal setting using design and storytelling, and that's at gumroad.com slash G-S-U-D-S, which these will all be linked in the show notes as well, and it's on Skillshare. Uh, the last thing we hope you'll check out is that if you enjoy this show, we do have a forum now, and it's on um, Discord. Yes, and then we have a Discord uh, invite link in the show notes for this episode where there's like six different discussion channels you can participate in. Three are public, so anybody can sign up for those. The other three are behind the Patreon wall. You have to support us on Patreon to get access to those areas. And so, uh, yeah, this is a place where, this is going to be one of the perfect places where we could share some of these two-minute warm-up, uh, or what are we calling them, Rob? Two-minute? Uh, two-minute practice sessions. Two-minute practice sessions. Two minutes to practice. Yeah, I know that's why you, you chose that. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's just my brain. Yeah, I well, I got it right away, and I liked it. All right, so um, <laughs> the session that threatens doom. All right, so final thought time. What are we thinking for the final thought, Rob? Okay, so what what would we pick as like? What do we want to start to practice with this? Like, do do we want to um, like what do we what if we just invite everyone? to explore um, one or more of these prompts at, at their own choosing, right? So you can choose one of these prompts. Um, which ones would you pick? The ones that we shared or so far? One, yeah, exactly. So, or what one comes to mind? So you can invent mm, one. I like Go that idea. It. I like the idea of saying, asking the leaners to share with us either on social media you know, we'll, we'll say our social media like links in just a second. But the, the easy one is lean into art. You know, you can add tweet lean into art. You can um, also post in the lean into art discord. What would be, and I would say limit it, let's whittle it down to three. Can you come up with one to three things that you would most like to be more practiced at in a year? Take, ah, uh, this is recursive beauty. This is how, how nature is fractal. Use the two-minute practice session to generate <laughs> ideas for two-minute yeah. practice sessions. Yep. Boom. There, that, <laughs> this is how we kick this off. 
<laughs> what is the, what is that that the internet meme is like cosmic brain <laughs> <laughs> we, we, uh, it took 301 I, episodes finally <laughs> finally we got the cosmic galaxy in our minds I know there's some other name for it, and like I, I'm going to lean into and celebrate the fact that I always get the names wrong. Like when I was saying um, pushing up the ceiling for raising the roof, and Zach Gialongo got an endless amount of joy out of making fun of me for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on being more square. One of the things that I, I talk about in the Four Million Years Later podcast is this character named Chip Chase, who's this you know, this guileless, happy young man who's a computer genius and helps the Autobots out a lot. And he, he, he says these like, like, uh, um, unironically, he says things like, Oh, I'm doing my best. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's the target. That's where I want to be. That's like, that's the, that's the, the, uh, ethical and moral character that I want to exude in, in my later years. Uh, and pushing up the ceiling, I think is getting me partially there as, as well as galaxy brain or whatever it's called. Cosmic brain. <laughs> All right, so to so okay, so action item, everybody is so, d- two minute exercise. So, yep. Yeah, so yeah. do the, do the do the exercise to generate the exercises, and like yep. for sure we'll be sharing them. And if to whatever extent you're comfortable, I mean, you can reach us via email as, as well, right? So you don't have mm-hmm. to do that publicly. There you go. So a variety of ways to reach out. Um, if you happen to be in our Discord, that's a great place to do it. We'll mm-hmm. quickly come up with if, you know, maybe we just sort of combo purpose to the creative challenge place for this. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, yeah, lots of places to go about. Just go ahead and reach out if you generate these ideas. Over the course of seven days, two minutes, only two minutes at a time, you'll have at least seven ideas, probably more. There you go. Yeah. All right. Ideas. We'll look forward to what seeing. What else to practice? Two minutes at a time. And you can reinforce positively. Um, want a food for thought we we could even plant this seed you can push the ceiling up push the ceiling up every time you practice to celebrate yes to celebrate. i <laughs> honestly feel great saying that and doing it i am not mocking you jersey i know i'm a convert <laughs> All right. Thank you for this episode, Rob. I think this is a good one. I think this is an exciting new thing to try this year. So we record this show on Thursdays, usually at noon Eastern time, uh, 11 a.m. Central. And we stream it live on twitch.tv slash Alina to Art and then collect it as a podcast at leanintoart.com and patreon.com slash Alina to Art. We'll be back next week with another episode. Until then, I have been Jersey Drozd of leanintoart.com and Jersey Drozd on Instagram. I have been Rob Stenzinger of leanintoart.com and I'm Rob Stenzinger, places like Instagram. Okay, bye. Show notes for this episode can be found at leanintoart.com. You can also follow us on Twitter at the user leanintoart and you can reach us via email at leanintoart at gmail.com. And remember, leaners aren't wieners. Thanks for listening.